Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. I recently got this coffee blend turnabout stamp from Concord and Knife. I've been wanting to try turnabout stamps, but I haven't actually delved into them yet. So today was the day to try it out. So I pulled it out of the packaging. It comes with an alignment tool that is going to keep everything aligned and ready to go, making sure that you stamp in the proper position. So the first thing you want to do is once you take your stamp out of the packaging and you want to stamp, you're going to use Use that alignment tool make sure all of the images are aligned properly before putting them into your misty stamping tool this is a very important step you don't want to miss this there is also a jig that you can get from concord and ninth i don't have it so i'm just doing this without it and it worked out okay the paper that i'm going to be stamping on is five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths and it stamped well before that i tried a piece of cardstock that was six by six and it was too big the alignment was all off i got the five and seven eighths measurement from the jig that came right in the packaging i figured if that was the correct measurement for lining everything up on the jig then it would probably work on a piece of cardstock and by working on a square piece of paper that's five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, once I'm done stamping everything, I can cut it down to the size that I want. As with all my acrylic stamps, the very first thing I do is take a white eraser and rub along the stamping surface of the stamp. This removes any manufacturing residue that may be on there and it helps the stamps take the ink a little bit better. I'm working with dye inks, which tend to um, be a little bit more tricky on acrylic stamps. So I am going to double stamp everything. If you want multiple colors for this image, you'll need four different ink pad colors to stamp with. If not, you could always do all the same color and have just an all over um, stamped image, but it's really fun using the different colors. So I have three browns that I've chosen, and then the last color that I'm going to do is green. So you saw me stamping the first image. I stamped it twice, and then I turned it a quarter turn. Now, one thing to keep in mind is pay attention to which way you stamp the quarter turn or which way you turn the cardstock your quarter turn because you're going to want to turn it the same way every single time. The first time I did it, I accidentally wasn't paying attention and I turned it the wrong way the second time. So this one is the coffee themed uh, turnabout stamp from Concord and Knight. They make a bunch of different ones. So if coffee isn't your thing, then there's absolutely a bunch of different ones to choose from. The method for them is exactly the same. I chose the coffee blend one because I have a couple daughters that work in coffee shops and it just reminds me of them. I'm actually not a coffee drinker myself, but um, it's a really, really cute stamp and it's a great way to play around and create some cute backgrounds and really most people are coffee drinkers or latte drinkers so it's a great one to give to friends you could even pop a coffee card or a gift certificate gift card into the card for a friend that happens to love a certain coffee shop that would be a fun gift the last color that i'm doing is bundled sage i chose this because it's kind of a matcha color and I do really like matcha. There's a really cute coffee mug stamp in this set that I'll be using in just a moment. And I wanted to put some green at the top um, for the matcha. So this is gonna tie that in really, really well. There's also some cute tiny stamps within the set as well as um, some cute sentiments. So my background is done. So I've taken it out of my Misty stamping tool and I'm working on the image. Not sure if I said this already, but I'm doing the, I did the background in the Misty stamping tool to keep the alignment um, proper. I think it would be a lot more difficult to just use an acrylic block with the turnabout stamp. If you're good at aligning things, you probably could, but it's definitely going to be a lot easier to work in a misty stamping tool. Um, that way you know everything is stamped exactly where it should be and you're not going to have overlapping from subsequent stamps. So I stamped my coffee image with some Distress Ink. It's one of the colors that I use for the background. I cleaned my stamp off and now I'm using some Versamark ink. I want to use some clear embossing powder on here so that my coffee mug is glossy. I am double stamping that Versamark ink just because I'm doing it right over the um, distress ink. You could, if you wanted, heat set that distress ink so then you um, know it's going to take the Versamark ink a lot easier. I chose not to. I'm going to cover that area with the clear embossing powder and then I'm going to use my embossing tool to melt that powder. Now it's really easy to see exactly what part is melted because it's gonna go from a frosty look to a clear glossy look and you'll be able to just read what the mug says a lot easier. 
Now, if you've never embossed before, you do need a specific embossing tool to do this. I've been asked in the past if you could just do it with a hairdryer. That's not gonna work. Hair dryers blow air, so it would dry the ink and blow the powder off. Embossing tools emit heat, so it would emit the heat to melt that powder and it's not going to dry the ink and blow everything off. Now that my coffee mug is embossed, I'm going to stamp that center of the mug, the drink in the mug, and I'm going to use that green color that I was talking about to do that. I'll have all the colors and all the tools that I'm using listed and linked down in the description below, so if I forget to mention something, you'll find the information likely down there. Just like I did before, I'm gonna use my white eraser just to clean the surface, get any manufacturing residue off of there and help it to take the ink a little bit more. Often the first time I use an acrylic stamp with Distress Ink, even if I use that eraser to get the residue off, it'll be a little bit blotchy. Most of the time, the way to fix that is double stamping. For that match at the top, I didn't do that. I only stamped it one time because I like that model look for that particular image. It just looked a little bit more realistic to me. Now, if you wanted to, you could take this mug and leave it as a square or rectangle on the front of your card. I chose to use my Cutter B scissors and fussy cut around it. If you've never used a pair of Cutter B scissors before, they are fantastic. I've had mine for probably about 10 years. They're nice and sharp. They come with a blade cover, so you don't have to worry about accidentally poking yourself. And the tips of the scissors are really nice and sharp. So getting into the handle part of that mug is really really easy I just pierce it and then I cut around it um, detail cutting scissors are one of those things that I think are a must-have for paper crafters and card makers and these ones have never failed me they are fantastic now that that mug is done I'm ready to cut down my print piece or my background image for the front of my card so I'm cutting it down to five and a quarter by four inches and like I said before it's great to have a larger piece here so you can pick and choose exactly what you want to see on the front of the card it's an all over print so there's not a whole lot of different things to pick and choose from but if you wanted a certain area you certainly could do that then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by five and a half this is Nina classic crest cover stock it's nice and thick and heavy and I took that eight and a half by five and a half piece and I scored it down the center at four and a quarter. Now I can assemble the front of my card. I have a piece of green here that matches the matcha color that I stamped on the background as well as the mug. And it's going to put just a little thin border around my image piece here. If you wanted it to stand a little bit more, I could have chosen uh, one of the brown colors that is also on the front. But I just like that mint color and wanted to highlight that. And having a mat on the front of the card frames that print nicely and just kind of finishes it off. I used some Distress Collage Medium to glue all of those layers in place. I like using the Distress Collage Medium because it dries completely clear and it also dries matte. So if anything happens to seep out, you're never going to see that there's any glue there. It rarely happens, but it's nice to know that you're not going to be able to see any glue or there's not going to be any sticky areas. For the mug piece, I'm using some foam tape and just putting some pieces on the back. I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy and popped up really nicely. I'm also putting a few small pieces on the mug handle to make sure that that gets propped up nicely. Once I've got the tape on the back there, I'm just going to remove all of that tape and then glue it to the center front of my card. There is an area below that mug once I've put it on there that you could put a sentiment on there if you wanted. I chose not to. I thought it looked too busy on the front of the card and I didn't want to add more to it. So I chose to put the sentiment on the inside of the card instead. The inside looked a little bit blank compared to that front, so it's a perfect place for it. So I'm going to put it back into my Misty stamping tool. With the card open, I'm going to line up my Thanks a Latte stamp, and that actually is in this set as well, as well as these little coffee beans that I'm going to put in the corner. I'm just going to stamp them with one of the browns that I use for the background on the front. You could do it with any of the colors to tie everything in, or you could do them two separate colors if you wanted. They're far enough apart that it's easy enough to um, ink the two different stamps with two different colors if you were wanting to do that. It's always nice to have those options. So I'm going to stamp or ink those stamps and I'm going to stamp them. And I'm, once again, I'm going to do it twice just to make sure that I get a nice clear stamped image on the inside. And now that that is done, we've got the perfect card for the coffee lover in your life. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. Have a fabulous day.